like, you know, about business. Um, but let's, let's keep going. So, so even so others have soured wondering how much going live will mean. Yeah. So that, that's the thing. So here, if they, if they did go live, here's the benefit. Um, you can pivot each week depending on how things are going. So when you have a month worth of tapings in the can and you get new information, it's very difficult to change the show. And as you can see, they've had a hard time you know, capitalizing on Jordan Grace being in NXT because they already had a month worth of television you know, in the can already. And so they really couldn't pivot or change or anything like that. And that, that NXT deal came after they'd already done the Kentucky tapings. So D'Angeli being let go, even though the ticket sales for Slammiversary in Montreal indicated the best gate the company would have done in years. Although, now here's another key point. And this is what I was hinting at the last couple of weeks, right? Said so although others noted that that was misleading as night one sold well because of PCO and individuals purchasing big blocks to distribute. Okay. So the secret on sale thing. And I talked about it and I went hard on those, uh, on those uh, guys that like to go and, you know, get their belt seen on television. Um, well, this the, they have the best advance in the company in ten years is because they made deals with local businesses to buy those tickets. That's what that was. So PCO is going around and promoting it and selling big blocks of tickets to local sponsors, who are then either going to resell those tickets or give them away to their employees or do giveaways as for advertising reasons so like you know how we you know radio stations have free tickets to give away sometimes they they wait till the very end and they get the tickets from the company itself and then they they give them away like for radio contests and stuff like that that's not a new thing and then like other like business big businesses will actually buy up a bunch of tickets to give to their employees or or like say like they can do a sale in their store and say hey if you buy whatever if you buy a taco you can have this ticket for five dollars or something like that right so that's what that was so um and as a matter of fact a uh, friend of the show eli samuel who big supporter of uh, brace for impact for a long time sent me a dm and i think he actually tweeted it out too but uh he actually did uh, did some real journalism here <laughs> unlike me he uh he actually dm'd pco and said how many tickets have you sold now i don't know if P i don't think pco is actually running that account but um, the person running PCO account who may or may not be Carl Houlette, uh, said that they have, they have two, 2000 tickets out. So, and I think a large number of that, maybe even like half is some of these big sponsors buying up the tickets. But even so, even if that's the case, I will hold up my end of the deal if they get to 3000 and I will buy a stupid big con t-shirt. <laughs> And he said, uh, he goes on to say night two is not selling uh, well at all. He said, the one thing about full sale, if shows are based on Orlando and NXT is on Orlando, they can easily do crossover angles. So that's what I'm, that's, that's, the, that's the, one of the big positives for going to full sale is, you know, continue to do NXT crossover angles. And I talked about it on the Mike and JD show, it benefit, it actually benefits WWE to continue working with TNA. Not because it's actually made NXT exciting and it really has. And I think Jordan Grace is actually, her, the inclusion of TNA on NXT, while it has not helped TNA, it has absolutely helped NXT because NXT's numbers are doing really well right now. And they're actually kind of like as far I don't really like the show. I don't think it's a good show at all, but they're kind of hot right now. And so and, I, and a big part of that is them working with TNA. Now, none of that is translated over to TNA. And part of it is because they're in front of 200 people in a bar in Kentucky, Cincinnati, Ohio. And they already their show's taped and it's you know been taped for weeks now and they have not been able to do anything exciting on their show and there has not been anybody from NXT coming over and and none of the fan like WWE fans and the, and you know JD tried to beat it into my head and I wouldn't let him have it but he's right WWE fans only watch WWE that's it they and they, like they're not actually gonna call their cable provider. And pay extra money to get access TV to be able to watch TNA. It hasn't happened. So it said, however, and, the, and the, here's, the, here's the evidence. However, there was great disappointment as they hoped the appearance of Jordan Grace on the 528 NXT show 
with all the mentions of TNA on the show would lead to a ratings increase for the show on 530. And we don't know what that number is because it didn't hit the top 150. And that's uh, that's a 0.01 or less than 19,000 viewers in the 18 to 49 demo uh, from number 134 on down. Yeah. So TNA has only been in the top 150 a couple of times this year. So they're losing viewers at a greater rate than the drop of, than the, than the decline of cable homes. So it's like a lot of times every company is down year over year and it's going to continue to go down for the next, you know, whatever until cable eventually peters out. But TNA's decline is actually faster than the decline of uh, in homes of cable uh, or decline overall viewers for all of cable. Their decline is faster because last year they were always in the top 150 towards the bottom. You know, but more often than not, they were in the top 150 since I've been covering TNA more often or since Access has been reporting their numbers to the Nielsen group. They have been in the top 150 more often than not to where I actually had a ratings tracker. I would report the ratings in my old columns every week and I would report them on the podcast. But right now, because they're not even breaking that top 150, which is um, you have to at least get to 19,000 viewers or more in the 18 to 49 demo. Because they're not able to reach that, they're they're not in the top 150, which spells doom for TNA as far as like TNA being on Access, um, because Access TV has only gotten worse, and because of that you know, and TNA is their number one show, and they have not been they have not been able to get new fans to come in, or they not even new fans, they have not been able to keep the fans that they already have, and a lot of people thought that once they cross over to the TNA name. That they that would get them to be sustainable, get them into the top 150, um, you know, every single week, and numbers would grow and all that stuff. It just hasn't happened. Uh, he goes on to say it's funny because the relaunch under TNA name did so big on pay per view, and since January ratings have been so low, they don't reach the top 150. Uh, this does coincide with Scott Demore being gone, but it's hard to think that such a thing would be immediate, or that even a change of a name from uh, Impact to TNA would cause a ratings drop. I don't think that the I think. I think taking off in the fourth quarter last year and not coming back until after hard to kill caused this. Now I think that was a big part of it. I think they just, people found other stuff to watch. Just never came back. So said so the timing of this and WWE relationship with grace working multiple days for NXT is interesting. Uh, the grace deal was largely kept secretive. Uh, we've been told that Grace and Raquel Rodriguez were possibilities to face Roxanne Perez at Battleground, but even by then, the deal with Grace had apparently been cut. Most in TNA had no idea of the TNA management cut with WWE. Most in NXT didn't know, but there were more than, but there were more than a few. I guess pe more people knew than um, they were told off the record. Um, uh, also, there's belief that WWE involvement that there will be WWE involvement against all odds. Um, and against all odds on 614, which is next Friday in Chicago. And NXT teased the idea of Grace versus Tatum Paxley. Um, he goes on to say, and we're going to finish up reading the Observer together as a family. But uh, there's always the question of selling the tape library, which does have a lot of big names. But WWE is the coldest it's been uh, as far as wanting to buy tape libraries because so much isn't on Peacock these days. And there's so little viewing of the old programming, let alone from uh, from other places. So... You know, I, I I addressed the whole WWE buying TNA, and that's just not happening. It it makes no sense for WWE to buy a TNA because WWE isn't its own company anymore. WWE isn't WWE. WWE is under is an affiliate of TKO Group, and if you're going to tell TKO that they want to buy TNA, there's no reason for them because. Peacock doesn't even leverage the old tape libraries as it is. It's not a big part of what they do. And now they're going to move over to, to, to Netflix. Netflix isn't really going to care about that. What's Netflix going to do with the TNA library? It actually benefits WWE to keep TNA alive for multiple reasons. One reason being that WWE does not want an antitrust lawsuit on their hands. And they don't. Uh, UFC just settled one. And they just settled their lawsuit with MLW, so, um, so that's that's it. So WWE is not buying TNA. I don't think TNA is going out of business, but I want to swig a coffee for TNA.
But I think that um, I, I don't think TNA is going out of business. I've done this video before, so I'm not really going to harp on it. But it's not looking good right now. It isn't. Things can change, though. They can get that full sale deal and revitalize the company a little bit. But honestly, they have lost so much consumer confidence that the decline this year has been ridiculous. Um, it's going to be tough sliding for TNA going forward. Um, not looking good. This anthem, These Anthem people are not competent people. They have proven that for years. So we'll see what it really looks like. Um, and... So I so I don't know I don't I don't know what it's going to look like for TNA going forward. Uh, I hope they get the I hope they get the deal with uh, Full Sail University. I hope they go live every week. I I hope they just they're prosperous and uh, <laughs> and everything. But right now, uh, with the television ratings in the toilet, and you know WWE fans not coming over to watch TNA on Access. I think it. I think it's looking scary, man. So, um, but we're not. We're not there yet. They're not dying. I don't think they're dying. I'm not saying that. In fact, I think if Anthem did want to pull the plug, they would just call up Scott Demore and sell him the company. And I think he would buy it in a heartbeat. I really do. I think he loves the company. I think he would buy it. But even then, what would it look like if Scott Demore buys it? Would it be as funded as it is now, or would it get even? Would they cut even more costs? I, I don't know. I, it depends. Like, I know Scott's got some money, but he ain't got, like, he's not a billionaire. You know, could he get a bunch of people to invest in the company, like, you know, an investment group? And, you know, they have the streaming app and all that stuff. Could they, could he do that? I, I, I don't know. I don't know what kind of, I don't know what kind of people he has access to. But I get the feeling that if, uh, if TNA did sell to Scott to more, we're just spitballing here. It's not me reporting. If he if they did sell to Scott Demore, he would he would move the whole operation to Windsor, and they would be recording out of St. Clair College, and it would be kind of a glorified Border City Wrestling. I think that's what happened if Scott Demore bought it, but I don't know. We'll see.